loud. All right, everyone, welcome back to the Soccer Talk Lads podcast. Uh, Steven will be joining us shortly and pending litigation from the city of St. Louis. We are still the STL podcast. Uh, <laughs> I welcome my guest, my guest host, my second host, Ian. Welcome in. How are you? I'm, I'm always uh, happy to be a guest anywhere I go. I like to think I'm a guest to the world as I travel amongst this. Oh, yeah globe <laughs> I don't know. uh it's it's good that's been great it's been a great week of soccer um for fans of stl city only <laughs> i was gonna say great week of soccer when i thought about the other team or before and that uh sentence quickly fell apart yes we will be getting in some tottenham uh a certain manager trying to get fired i think so <laughs> <laughs> i think his job should be a question i think he's questioning himself he wishes people would question right it. people aren't questioning it which is the problem <laughs> <laughs> that's right please someone please i of course am justin horniker of the sock talk lads podcast of the uh find my riding in area sports and a steel mech so I recapped this game for area sports, Ian. So if we want to go back, of course, St. Louis won three nothing to be the first ever expansion squad to go four and zero. They were the first four games and win over San Jose. Impressive, I, absolutely yeah. impressive. I had some goosebumps. Uh, their opening light show that they had at the stadium was pretty spectacular. Ian, did you see any of the pictures of the stadium like lit up in red? It looked. I I did. I was. I was happy. I was excited that they pulled the uh, the Austin FC, but just with our colors or whatever. Uh, that was really dope. Yeah, it looked very Stranger Things, which I appreciate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I liked they like had Muse music that cued mm. into that and then very, very um, like, I don't know, get the blood pumping. It's kind of like yeah. pre-war music going. And I was like, oh, man, this is like red alert. That's and I very need. much, yeah, and I very much appreciate that over fireworks because, like, when I know, even when I know fireworks are coming, I'll like jump out of my seat just because oh, of yeah. the like, loud flashbang. <laughs> oh, yeah. I could never, I think it was the ambush that did like a cannon, I want to say. Oh, sweet. Inside <laughs> and scared the piss out of me as a child. Like, I hated that thing. I, I still remember going to like hockey games and not liking when of the home team scoring because I'm like this thing is too loud um so yeah I can I can definitely appreciate just a, a nice light show yeah really set the mood uh they lined up in a 442 just like they did their last home opener so some more tactical adjustments from Bradley Carnell uh with Tim Parker's groin injury so Tim Parker didn't play which meant Lucas Bartlett stepped in uh, a starting center back duo that had 274 minutes of MLS experience before this game so impressive that they're able to get a clean sheet out of this i so say yeah that's uh, it was already there was already a concern with the back end and then you make it even thinner and even thinner as we'll talk about but yeah it's like that's that's the part that always scares me a little bit but honestly i mm -hmm. felt like this game they they played really well also they didn't really seem to have that much action either to have to deal with yeah it was definitely the Best, especially the first half i thought was like the most complete performance they've had so far i think i noted that here but yeah it was very impressive to do that with like such an inexperienced back line also yeah i was gonna say early on i want to say they looked they they had more time in their own zone and that had me a little worried i think what, this was like a day where the high was 32 degrees a oh, yeah. brisk March evening in St. Louis. I was very cold. It got to the point where my computer wouldn't charge when I had it plugged in. Like, right. <laughs> the press row was outside, so it was very, very cold. Uh, not the most fun. <laughs> this is this is unheard of levels of cold in St. Louis. Um, yeah, like I just thought with that, and then the way they kind of looked, like literally just off the hop. Um, I think I noted, I was like, oh, I don't know. Like they played pretty well these last three games. You just never know. Probably gonna get a probably gonna have an L, just a random prediction. And like the mm. first five, 10 minutes, I was like, oh, they're not looking great. But then literally, I think after I wrote that down in my phone, they like looked great for the whole rest of the half. Yeah, they had the like kind of slot. Like it was definitely a better start than we talked about with the first three games, but it still wasn't perfect. Mm. But yeah, they tightened things up really quickly. Like, I wasn't sure how the cold was going to deal with that, but they did a good job. So their press intensity was high from the early going. That was like one of the first notes I made 
Uh, they created some chances, some great A chances from Klaus, like within the first 15 minutes. They get their breakthrough finally in the 34th minute. Goal was set up by Edouard Leuven, who picked up the ball after a nice kind of interception inside inside our half, but definitely closer to the halfway line. Lewin would triple through the San Jose midfield, like taking on the entire midfield uh, mm. for finding John Nelson trailing behind the play on the left side. And then Nelson would send it across. That looked like it was going to Klaus, but Klaus lets it bounce. It goes to Giochini, who's able to just kind of get a foot on it, redirect it into the back corner. And it's one nothing St. Louis. That was a, that was a greasy goal. Greasy. By Giochini. Like it was just, I, I, it was one of those things where, from the angle on TV, I wasn't even sure that he got a foot on it. Like if he mm. got a foot on it or if like the, it, he'd hit it off the goaltender, um, the keeper, it was like, it was just an impressive sort of uh, gritty goal. I feel like I'm trying to think of the other two. I feel like that was like all of our goals this game. Um, yeah. Very, um, very American soccer. Uh, but I, I enjoyed it. Like I liked seeing the young guys play really well. And get on the board early especially when he like draws into like the opening or like the starting 11. yeah like joking is still 22 but he feels like he's been around for forever but like it feels like he's finally found a situation that fits him well i actually asked carnell about it after the game props to me for asking a question <laughs> well done well done he's just um, staring at daggers at you yeah it, like i always feel so awkward because he does like stare right at you when he's answering a question i'm like am i supposed to be making eye contact <laughs> you're supposed to like also interact like <laughs> uh, that's cool, yeah, cool right, right. um but he said that like yeah it seems like he finally found a situation that he's comfortable in like with the way that he plays he's aggressive he runs he commits and like really suits him well in this carnell system so happy to yeah. see it i was like it was I think he fits, yeah, like you said, well, in like a pressing team. And it almost felt like, too, from the little beginning bits that we saw of San Jose, it felt like they were a bit of a pressing team as well. It sort of, their press didn't necessarily work the rest of the game, but like it made for like a very fun, entertaining game. Yeah, they they have an interesting setup in that they press, it's more of like a, they press against possession, but once they get possession, they want to slow things down and build up slowly. And them... I think this is a team that gets better later in the year, but like right mm. now, especially with how we were able to kind of make their back line uncomfortable. Yeah, it felt like they're it felt like they were never able to really like figure out how to transition up the field. Mm. Like it just felt like that city was constantly like stymieing them in the middle. Like there was a lot of midfield play, but it always started going back towards the uh, San Jose keeper and it was just never really much of any threat that I could see until maybe like later in the second half, uh, but getting a little bit ahead, but yeah, it was just like, yeah. they didn't really seem like whatever strategy they were trying to employ was really working, nor did it seem like they really tried to change it at all. Yeah. One thing I noticed, like, especially being at games, you can kind of see from like that higher level a little mm -hmm. bit more. Um, so like seeing their structure and how well structured and like they don't really break down too well. So like San Jose's best chances came from like Espinosa and Cape Cal just like dribbling through the midfield. But mm. anytime they try to pass through, like the passing lanes just aren't there. It's, yeah, it's something. like this is a really well coached team, or at least thus yeah. far, it seems like they've they've been where they need to be and there really haven't been any like ginormous gaffes for in, in any of these games really i mean even with goals against some of them have just been like really good goals and maybe just like a lapse here or there or someone just yeah. being faster than another player the only time they've really been exposed was that in austin that drew seagull where he kind mm. of like burns hebert but like outside of that they've and that's the first game so like you would expect that to be drilled out it's yeah it's definitely been good well organized drilling yeah, and we kicked Hebert into Canada now. Yeah, you know, yeah. Now, problem. now he's up there. It's Canada's <laughs> issue. Goals for <laughs> Hebert. We put some respect on his name. Oh yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, okay, so they kept up that pressure throughout the half um, into the closing moments where they would force a turnover against a charging San Jose. They were able to come back with numbers, and this is where Klaus just decided that he was going to <laughs> score. <laughs> yeah, this so is crazy. He picked up the ball into the midfield. He does like a no-lick pass that he tries, and the ball comes right back to him in stride. And he kind of gets there after some interplay with Giochini, and he just, yeah, just runs in towards goal 
no San Jose defender is able to get the ball off him, and he just slots it past San Jose keeper James and Marsikowski. He just he's a giant <laughs> that wills himself. I like, couldn't the believe this goal. Like he just yeah. decided it's like one of those goals when a striker just decides, okay, I'm I'm just gonna score. Here. <laughs> <laughs> it was just crazy because of how many like the two or three little bits of resistance he got and still came away with the ball where I was like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. oh, oh my. And then he shot it and I was like, holy crap. This is like what I imagined might happen in my head, but never did I think it was like actually going to happen. Um, yeah. Another, another sort of just like greasy goal that he just willed in. I mean, the finish is great, but like just to be able to get there and like push mm. yourself through and will the ball in that position was like insanity. Um I mean, and I, I don't know if it's it's some size. It's a little bit of like he's got speed for a guy of that size is a little intimidating coming down. Like you uh, don't expect like him that. to have the speed that he has. I think it's yeah, it yeah. <laughs> you're just like, oh, well, obviously he's not going to. And then he's like by you. Um, yeah, I don't know. He's he's been a revelation. Klaus is just he's I'm so well, glad they have him. I'm so glad that there's like someone on this team that's sort of like a weird mascot human yeah. that's also good because like Leuven's great. Um, I like Stroud and everything, but some of these guys are uh, soccer or soccer player. Yeah. You a need someone soccer with... player B. <laughs> yeah. I need someone that's like, this, look at this funky looking dude. Yeah. And like, and he's just got like such a fun like personality and like great smile, weird hair. He looks like he's 34. He's 26 uh it's very confusing he's very tall he runs kind of weird and he can score goals and it's like oh i love this i love this so much taylor 12 has been calling him a wounded fawn and i think that's like a perfectly <laughs> apt description <laughs> a wounded super jack 300 pound fawn yeah it just yeah, like gets right by you he has a weird gait um i mean i know it's kind of like we compare him to like holland a bit but like there was a guy I ran with in cross country that wasn't quite the same as that, but he definitely had this like falling forward and catching himself gate thing where I was like, are you going to slip? Um, and he was really tall and it was just kind of this like lumber forward. And he was like one of our best runners. And I just remember being yeah. like, sometimes, sometimes you look funky, but it gets the job done. We would always have this debate. Cause I had one of the guys I coached in college had this, just like you could hear him coming from a mile away, but there's yeah. always this debate over like, okay, do you optimize a way that a guy currently runs or do you try to like change his form? And usually yeah. like changing someone's form just like ruins them for the rest of their entire life. <laughs> so <laughs> That's so interesting. Yeah. It's like, do I build this from the ground up mm. completely and just like fight your brain on this? Or do we just kind of like ease your motor skills into something a little better? So what we're trying to say is Klaus, don't change a thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> You're perfect the way you are. Um, yeah. What a guy. He like has totally embraced, I think, the way that St. Louis fans just love him. Like every press conference, he's like, Yeah, I love it here. I love these guys. I love playing here. And then we're just like, Yeah, Klaus, we love you too. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we have good Brazilian food. Do we have good Brazilian food here? I don't know. I feel like not as good as our like Mediterranean food, that's for sure. Look, there are other like, foods here you can yeah, enjoy. Like Selmir Pijo probably loves leaving here. Yeah, like, see, this is your spot. Look at all the Brazilian, the uh, Bosnian food we have. That's right. Yeah, I don't know if anyone knows a good Brazilian spot, set us up in the comments. I'm trying uh, to think of what they <laughs> what they eat as if I'm talking about like some other animal. What do Brazilians eat? Because uh, all I would think of is those restaurants where they like shave the the meat off uh, of yeah, like the Brazilian, thing. Brazilian yeah. barbecue is good. That's, that's all right. I, that's all I know, really. Is that is that even a real thing? <laughs> is this like shrimp on the barbie where you go to Brazil and they're like, we don't do that here. That's not a thing. That's okay. <laughs> it's okay. We love you anyways, class. Yeah. Even if you don't like the food here, it's okay. You can say <laughs> it. You don't have to be nice. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Speak your mind. Okay. On to the second half, of course, they come out with that 2-0 lead. Um, Cape Cowell kind of came alive in this half. San Jose came out definitely with some urgency, but Kate Kyle missed some great A opportunities. Uh, our San Jose friends at Tectonic Takes were aghast at some of the misses <laughs> that he had. <laughs> uh, Berkey came up with some good saves as well, so don't want to discount Robin Berkey in this game. 
A third goal would come in the 68th minute after more first turnovers in San Jose's end. The goal was a bit bedlam, as we talked about, Ian, with those kind of greasy goals. Mm -hmm. Uh, San Jose blocked about three attempts and then finally found its way to Thomas Ostrak, who kind of puts everything behind it and deflects its way, but it had a lot of steam and finds its way into the back of the net for Thomas Ostrak's first goal in MLS. was, yeah, quite... uh some deflection uh, or bouncing ball on the way in, but like, uh, I loved his, I loved his celebration. It's, he did a little, a little gun shooting movement. And I was like, uh Oh, uh Oh, uh Oh, but the people love it. The people love it. I had to Feeling look himself. up where he was from. I was like, okay, let's see what country you're from. Czech, Czechia. Mm-hmm. Or is that what we call it now? Cause oh, then I was told it's now the Czech Republic. Well, again. we discussed this last podcast yeah. and it's, it's the Czech Republic again. Okay. Um... We've gone full circle, but I'm sure it's <laughs> Czechia again um whatever you call yourself i was like all right what's either one yeah but he, i mean he was pumped he was jacked like that was a great it's it's one of those things where like a two goal lead is that mm-hmm. safe in soccer probably generally makes saying it's a little more nerve-wracking though uh, yeah that's yeah true. that's true but like three goals that, that feels salted away especially at like the 68th minute and just the way they were playing um he was a was he a sub did they put him on later yeah so okay. we talked about this after the game actually yeah because he was subbed in um i have it in my notes that i don't have in front of me but yeah so he came in in the second <laughs> half and he like had a pretty good attitude about it he said but like of course we asked him like how he felt about not being a starter and he said of course i want to start everyone in this league wants to start but had a talk with coach Carnell. He thought I'd be more effective in the second half and I trust him to play me where it's best. So yeah. Cause it's like, was... he, has he started the other three? I know yeah. he started the third. Yeah. One. So okay. he has been a starter. Mm. Okay. Yeah. It was interesting, especially like, cause I, they subbed quite a few people in, in the second half. And I was like, someone was like, Oh yeah, you started earlier. It's like, an, just an interesting switch for some of these folks. Yeah, he used, uh, we used all of our subs this game. So that's something I like seeing too, is I feel like Carnell's very, cognizant of like not running people into the ground mm-hmm. okay what is it five is it five subs? yeah so you get five okay. yeah three windows but five subs so okay. like you have three opportunities to sub in your five players oh wait okay so there's windows yeah now so I'm, this is like because it used openly. to be yeah so it used to be three subs and then during covid they allowed extra subs because of just like congestion of games and things and right. it's better for players in general when they have more of an opportunity to get subbed in so yeah, so there's three opportunities to sub in five players. Gotcha. Now your opportunity, can you, how does, I've always wondered, how does this work? Because the play is never like, play is dead, but it's not dead. When do they actually go in? They just, it just happens. And I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So That's it's like I'm basketball, thinking. if you're more familiar with that, of like, okay, so you tell the fourth official that you got some subs ready, they come in, they report, and then the next stop you'll play. They get okay, okay. In, so. Gotcha. Because yeah, every so often I'm like, oh, wait a second. He's running in now. <laughs> What's going on? Every so often I literally, even though I know there's like 15 minutes left, they'll put mm. the they'll put their little board up and I'm like, is this extra time? And I'm like, no, you idiot. There's 15 minutes left. This is a sub. <laughs> it's a good sub. Yeah, we like those late game subs. So yeah, so I thought like second half wise, it wasn't as pretty as the first half, but the first half was like a perfect game of soccer. Mm. Um, and most of the, that can be chalked up to the game state as well. When you're up two goals heading into a second half, I think it's always going to be harder to play perfectly when the other team is pushing that hard. They took a lot of advantage of sloppy mistakes from San Jose's back line. And they, I thought they could have had two more in those closing stages too. Um, there was one where like, I think... Adenaran was trying to like he had a couple of runs where he almost made it happen on his own mm-hmm. and him and Jokini had some good interchange. So yeah, I thought they closed out this game really well too. Adenaran, that's that's somebody I was thinking as a sub that I was like, man, he's he's also a big dude. And I just find like his skill set to be very interesting. Yeah. Um I mean, just like I I want to see more from him. I just wonder, is he always gonna be relegated to being like a sub? Is it he's just younger like how does that work exactly is yeah just... i think he's like him and klaus i think have similar skill sets obviously klaus is much more refined at this point mm-hmm. um the dinner and still kind of a raw product but like i think they obviously like him because he's a hard worker he has speed he has that like physical presence so mm-hmm. like he probably could start here and there like 
as we get later in the season, as minutes get easier to come by because things are more congested. Like I think he has the trust to play important minutes, but like, obviously he's not at that quality and at that like level yet. Right. Yeah. It's just interesting. Whenever they sub him in, I'm like, he just has such a physical presence. Like you said, has like, is almost a little will, some of that stuff too, where I was like, man, this is like, this is very interesting in terms of just like him and Klaus and how they compare to <clears throat> other players or maybe more traditional looking built soccer players so it's mm. like i've i've found every time they put him on to be kind of like my eyes drawn to him yeah yeah and like he is that big presence too right so like you are almost like i think he gives that where like defenders are drawn to him especially when you're like in the goal area because he's dangerous and he has that like physical presence so mm. for sure um i thought Giochini was kind of my player of the game um it was his best performance in MLS for sure. He had one goal, one chance created, very accurate on his passes, uh, two passes into the final third, and was good on his duels as well, enough for Carnell to kind of shout him out after the game, along with Klaus Derwinski, Leuven, and of course, Roman Berkey getting his first clean sheet <laughs> in MLS. What do you think, Ian? Who are your kind of standout players this game? Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think Klaus, Klaus always stands out. Um, Okay, I'm gonna while well, I get this right because I feel like my brain always bops. So, how do you pronounce Giochini's name? Is that it? Giochini? Giochini. Giochini. I believe. Okay. <laughs> Don't you? We need to ask Steven because I'm not. No, Steven I'm doesn't know. Right. Steven doesn't know. <laughs> he even says he knows, but he doesn't know. Um, I'm gonna call him Joe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, but... My St. Louis mouth <clears throat> does not do the things that my brain tells it to do and pronounce. Yeah, that's right. So. There's like, yeah. <laughs> I blame, I blame De Pere, Des Perez. I blame like any, <laughs> yeah. any broken French thing here. I blame uh, my Grab ancestors Boy. for yeah. making me have hard A sounds. That's what yeah. I blame. <laughs> That's their fault. Um, but yeah, I thought he was really good too. I mean, obviously like stood out with his goal, but also just like the play in front. And I, I um, was still really drawn to, to Leuven too. Like I think, him in the midfield seems very like a very calming presence and a guy mm. that's like really good at pretty much like just sort of quarterbacking their whole half uh, in terms of like where to get the ball who's open where to sort of move to set folks up um i think he's just been like a really big key to like that whole middle of the field working um i didn't see i didn't Stroud started, right? I didn't feel like I saw as much from him in this game or like in terms of like, I think the last game, he was like all over the place. Yeah. Um, I was trying to work through, I, I haven't liked, um, or was it Indiana Vasilev? Yeah, Vasilev like, I thought had a good game. Yeah, I thought like he he showed up and like uh, had some really good passing plays, like some really good touches. They put him, they try and, and use him, I want to say like on a few set pieces too. Um, yeah, he usually like it's usually Leuven and Vasilev kind of both mm-hmm. stand over and then kind of make you guess who's going to get <laughs> to <so>. decide. <laughs> yeah, like I, I just think he was much more um, apparent to my eye than he had been in, in previous games. Mm. But then in the yeah, I think Berkey Berkey looked good for the little work that they gave him. But I mean, he did have some good stops and he had that one stop that even though they shot it like right at his hand, he was already leaning sort of the other way. And I was like, oh, that was really scary shit um but yeah and i think he's does a really good job as their like captain like i just feel like yeah. he's also sort of like a common presence on like the back end i get i get goaltenders and <laughs> soccer are always yelling at people yeah and whatever so they always but he was like in. very like very aggressive with it because like hebert and bartlett and like obviously it's a calming presence when you've only <coughs> played like four mls minutes in the case of bartlett but <laughs> there's true. time where there's a corner on the other end and Berkey like ran out to the halfway line to like yell instruction to Hebert and Bartlett about something he'd seen. So like, yeah, I think that is very important in terms of like how they're organized and it doesn't go on the score sheet, but something that you notice and I think is important. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I didn't really think about how, yeah, with a back end that's maybe not as seasoned as others that it, it helps having mm-hmm. someone kind of point things out. Um, even more useful in, in the next game here but yeah like i thought in general everyone looked really good um but yeah I, i'm just really impressed by how well they gel already i guess we sort of touched on this last game like the fact that they 
had city two playing last year and a number of these guys were on that team and already kind of know each other but like i'm just kind of blown away by how well really kind of that whole midfield plays Mm -hmm. with each other yeah i think because they were talking about it on total soccer show just about like how and why st louis has been this good already and like i think Mm -hmm. in my mind that's a lot of it because they talk about it because carnell mentions it all the time about how comfortable everybody is with each other and like that next man up mentality because everyone kind of knows what they're supposed to do and where they're supposed to be and i think that's important because they've like installed a coaching director and they've installed a play style from the very get-go here we are yeah i think it's like they're they already had a structure there and they can just like play through it and live with it um and yeah they're kind of like one of those teams where like the they're greater than the sum of their parts Mm -hmm. um and but then they have but then you know to to not take down any one player but like those parts that they have are still pretty good like klaus is klaus is klaus i gotta explain who klaus is um, klaus is classy that's right uh, oh, our is. resident florida man steven ground checking in steven what did you think of the game this is what this is where we're at in the podcast by the way <laughs> start from Here start from minute one. Can yeah, you start from minute one. Can you go through this goal like we just did? Uh, I mean, I thought it was great. It was cool to see them just uh, dominate the whole game, pretty much. I feel like each of these wins has taught us something a little different about the team. The first win taught us that they are incredibly lucky. The second <laughs> win, um, you know, each one showed us a little more, a little, a little bit of ability to fight through adversity, a little bit of a different look. And, and this one, you know, whether it was the elements or, you know, the travel for San Jose or whatever, it just, they were not, not in it really from the very start. I mean, there were some early moments that things could have been a little different, but really when you look at the, the sum total of the game, I think we were by far the better team and that was cool to see. And uh, Klaus with the greatest, uh, run of all time, the greatest sprint to goal, and I would say entirely intentional and deeply yeah. well coordinated. It was a no look pass, but he knew where it was going to come. Yeah, he, yeah, it was yeah. coming back to him. <laughs> he, was, he didn't need to look because it was him that was receiving it. So, you know, um, yeah. I mean, I thought it was great. I thought it was cool to finally get the queen sheet. Cool to get the win. Obviously, incredible to set the record for opening wins by a um, expansion team. You know. Take I don't, that, want, to yeah. I don't yeah, want to read rude. too much into that, but it is still it is still cool, and we should extend that record by beating uh, Real Salt yeah. Lake this week. And for reference, Seattle won the U.S. Open Cup and made the quarterfinals of the MLS playoffs that year. So, so that's all we got to do is that's be rude. better than all that stuff, right? right. You know, that's what we're should heading. be no problem. No problem. All right, so now we have Stevens' input. Look ahead to so the Real Salt Lake as we head to Utah. We'll try to keep our Mormon talk to a minimum, but I have no, I have no promises here. I have, I have not made that commitment. That is a jesting commitment. Steven is looking at a book entitled Old Gods, so I don't know. Oh, no. Or God's time. 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 We're all too oh, advanced no. start here. My, my very favorite author just released a new novel today, and I think it's literally the first book I have pre-ordered since one of the Harry Potter books. Wow. So That know. author is Brigham Young. That author is... <laughs> Brigham Young, brother Brigham, I prefer to oh. call him. But. Okay, get your special underwear ready as we head right. to Salt Lake. Uh, Salt Lake lost to Austin over the weekend. Try not to read too much into that, but it is worth noting that Austin outplayed them. Uh, Austin, we beat goals, Austin. So, we did beat know. Austin. So draw your conclusions where you want. <laughs> is there any team that we haven't yet beaten by transitive property, or at least drawn? We, I, mean, we I would have to do that. more more research. Well, I'm, sure. I'm, sure, I'm certain it's, <laughs> it's literally impossible that we. I, yeah, I don't think mathematically. Everyone. I don't think mathematically but, that works out yet. But yeah, give it a couple but, more games. <laughs> I, uh, I watched a little bit of this game, and Austin came at their goals by like really shooting from far out after like cuts into the inside of the field and it was kind of a game where both sides were kind of apprehensive uh rsl were dangerous off mid-range set pieces and mid-range balls which we know can get this team uh can get st louis hung up sometimes and especially if they're not careful off set pieces. That's been a point of contention for this team in the past, but they only generated 0.89 expected goals against Austin, who have a defense that is very bad. 
Uh, so that should tell you where they're at. However, Tim Parker, if he's still unavailable this weekend, although they're talking last week that it was something that precautionary to keep him out last game that he may be able to go this week. But if not, it's a uh, concern that he might just be too handsome. Yeah, his groin is too good, I think was the mm. issue. <laughs> That's what they told us. <laughs> I uh, hope that was covered in the press briefing. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I should have asked. I should have pressed further. Honestly, you really should. That's on me. That's my well, journalistic. Sure. <laughs> how are you? How are you credentialed if you don't ask the tough questions? You know what You're I'm right. saying. Stephen, you're right. And you I'm know, so, this is... I'm sorry to call you out here on this <laughs> podcast. No, but... I'm happy you do. I'm happy. You we do. we <laughs> already talked about how Carnell is staring daggers through his skull. <laughs> That's right. Oh yeah, Stephen, you would love this because when Carnell talks to you at a press conference, he makes eye contact with you the whole time, and I just like, oh, that's never, cool. I never know. <laughs> I never know what to do with my eyes. No, Does that make no, you Bradley. unhappy? It makes me very uncomfortable. Bradley, just like no, making eye address, contact in general. You can address the room, Bradley. Please address the room. I'm sure other people have this question. No, more no, no, people no, are no. wondering. Yeah. yeah. yeah more, anyone? I think Tom. I think Tom had this question, didn't yeah, you, Tom? Yeah. You had the same question. Um, so they could be thin on center back, is what I'm trying to say. Kyle Heifer got called into Canada yesterday because uh, Canada is very, also very light on center back options. And we now have Josh Yarrow and Jonathan Bell as our two other center back options. So that nice. could get dicey potentially. You could get dicey, man. This team's unstoppable. <laughs> I'll say I want I my insides want to doubt this team's back end, but the, thus far. Right. They started uh, a defensive pairing that should stop. not have worked last game and they got their first clean sheet of the of the year. So who am I? Who am I to say? Maybe uh, the more that we get run down, the better they are defensively. Can you be, can you do anything better than a clean sheet? Can they have a negative one goals? Now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can we can force them into goals. I guess it's not good. Maybe maybe this team just knows how bad the back end is. So like we just can't let the ball. We just can't let the ball get that far. Yeah, I think to be serious, it does speak to their structure of like how well they how good they are at limiting chances. But we can read other things into that too. We've got an important update if I may, on the FC Cincinnati race. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> FC Cincinnati, when they started, they actually had a pretty good start to their campaign in 2019, their inaugural season. They lost their first game, but then drew against Atlanta United and got back-to-back -back clean sheets against Portland and New England uh, with a 3-2 win against Portland and a 2-0 win over... Uh, uh, we, did, we didn't beat Portland. We did beat Portland. Never sorry, a 3-0 win over Portland and a 2-0 oh. win over England. Yeah, that's pretty um, awesome. They then did, though, proceed to win one game and draw one game in their next 14 games. All right. So, so enough, we enough already this. have uh, two more points than they had through four games. And as long as in the next 14 games, we don't, we add more than two points, we'll stay ahead of them. So I need to be careful because the karma train makes it seem like we're going to lose the next 14 games. And I just no, <laughs> can't, I can't deal with that. I, just, I cannot deal with that. <laughs> That'd be so sad. Imagine having to run, like ride the goodwill of like four games. Like, Hey, yeah, yeah we're terrible, but it was always fun. It was never about being, especially because some in this fan base have been running their mouth a little bit too much for four games. And I, I cannot deal with that karmic retribution. I just cannot. <laughs> You're not saying this is the most electric story in sports in North America right oh, now. Stop, stop doing it. You're, you're wrecking it. <laughs> are you, are you sure there's any team that's more interesting and exciting to watch than F than St. Louis city SC? Just guys, tell us. guys, this is just asking for trouble. I, I've been, <laughs> I've been a St. Louis sports fan for far too long to know that this isn't just asking for trouble. <laughs> How are St. Louis sports fans can pat themselves on the back about like about you know, anything? This Guys, is our you know this how is this our goes. Way. We've always they've always doubted us, I'm like and for good reason. Right, for very good reason. <laughs> you have one franchise here that has done anything consistently, and it hasn't done that in a, in a little while, and that's and. That's your history. <laughs> right. The Cardinals got too smug and they got smited back down to earth. So let's let's keep that in mind. Sorry if that brought people down. Hum just... <laughs> humble yourselves, St. Louis. Humble yourselves. You can't just name your podcast whatever you want, okay? You can't just do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
hey, we got to watch out. The city of St. Louis is going to file some trademarks <laughs> yeah. against us. So. <laughs> if, SPL, that's our fucking name. Do you, do you think if we name this, if we name this podcast Cease and Desist, that River City Ramble <laughs> will send us a Cease and Desist? I think so, yeah. I think, I think that is how that goes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, well, we'll try them anyway. Hey, we do not have the legal resources to be dealing with us. We do. We have all the legal resources. Who's stalking us? <laughs> Oh, we sorry, Stephen. I, yeah, I forgot that you do have you do have legal authority. That's right. <laughs> hey, Stephen, you. you're down there in Florida. Have you spotted Florin Bell again while you're down there? I haven't, but I've been Seen keeping a, a close eye on things, and and from everything I hear, he's guaranteed to join. Yeah, Team USA. What do you think an Englishman who currently plays soccer at Rams thinks of Orlando, Florida? Just like. I think I mean, that would be a bir- virtually the same experience. If I if I had to guess, I would say Orlando just a little bit classier. Yeah, you know, than Rams. less less uh-huh. gaudy. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, it was less gaudy. That is for sure. <laughs> <laughs> My question is, why would anyone go to Orlando if it wasn't to sign your one time switch to the U.S. Men's National Team? That's a right. question that's worth worth asking. I would hmm. say. So, is there just no? what's the deal what's the deal is there so, no room on the english team so balligan wasn't called in to okay. and i guess like he is a striker right so he's always going to they have a lot england has a lot of striking talent let's Do just they? say and you may have heard of this player named <laughs> very kane oh has he have That's i ever it's the yeah it's the only <laughs> bright spot in my life in the premier league <laughs> Yeah, so Balogun was called into the U21s. He pulled out of camp yesterday claiming injuries. He played the full 90 in his camp for Rems last week. Um, he is currently tied for third in goals in League uh, Uber Eats, League uh, I should say. Uh, <laughs> Uber Eats has have so League much money. Uh. <laughs> and he was spotted in I Orlando. I don't like the French numbering system. Uh. That's not a number. That's Why don't they say the entire word? That's right. you know, yeah, for, for, for any word. <laughs> There's other letters. Nah. They just like, they give it up, you know? <laughs> Pigden said it right. You know, St. Louis does French the right way, if you ask me. <laughs> God, if, French, if the French think that uh, French Canadian is like disgusting right. pig noises, imagine what they think when we say gravois. Grand boy. <laughs> I don't see the issue. Come on down to Le Bon. Yeah, so you spot in they're Orlando. Gonna the, they're it gonna is love the river to pair when they <laughs> <laughs> just like the river sin. It's the I'm same not. thing. I'm gonna hop on the press conference tomorrow and just ask. Balgan's not gonna be there, but I'm gonna ask. Who? <coughs> uh, let's say Walker Zimmerman. What do you think of so, river to pair? <laughs> <laughs> what what <laughs> say you? You say you love the city. You right. love the city. Well, then, what do you think of the river to pair? So yeah, you so have to, you have to answer for this. <laughs> this is on you explain your crimes you know and then just really get in their face about it yeah they'll know it'll be fine they'll they know. won't take they'll away understand. they won't take oh, away yeah. they won't it's called the, press. the press for a reason you gotta press <laughs> <laughs> okay so with that out of the way uh we have some international sometimes dealings. i get the feeling that justin <laughs> wants us to stop being ridiculous and actually talk about serious things and so that, was that out of Whatever. the way with wow. that out of the way oh okay so you tack on to that so uh Balogun is oh, reportedly so okay. Got it. rumors uh from people in the know have said that he is meeting with the u.s staff tomorrow just to talk you know just to have a good talk um, and then he's going to be at the game against Granada on Monday to take in the scenes. So to announce his new team. Hopefully Orlando doesn't scare him away. That's my one fear. They should have had this camp somewhere else. Like they knew that this was a possibility. Why wasn't this camp in LA? That's a good point. You're making a, a lot of good points. I gotta gotta be honest with you. LA. Do people do, you, do people right. from across the uh, the pond? Do you think they'd enjoy Nashville at all? Mm. Or is that going to scare them? Hey, maybe you just can't Crash let him go. Bill. You just can't let him off of like the main beaten path. Like they can't go the, further. The in main Tennessee. drag of the U.S. <laughs> don't let them venture into Tennessee. That's that's what you don't want. Similarly, similarly, if this was in Ohio, that would have been bad. Also, mm. <laughs> anywhere in the Rust Belt. Rust right. Belt, not him, the we main. We took drag. him to Florida. That's bad enough. 
I know. I was like, not even like a Miami or whatever. Orlando? Yeah. Like Miami would have been so much better. Like maybe, maybe they just venture down to Miami. Uh, Miami is <laughs> overrated. Let's be honest. Now, Jacksonville. Sorry. If we could talk about Jacksonville. <laughs> no, we know. took him to Jacksonville. <laughs> if he just I ventures would... a little outside of Orlando, he'll be in Jacksonville. That's true. They're really not that far apart. That is true. <laughs> that is just geographically accurate. <laughs> just look at that, man. All right. <laughs> Let's let's yeah. keep talking internationals though. There so, Justin goes again. Just... Jabu Lublam, have you heard about this? Have you heard about this? Uh, was called into the South African team. He was then not called into the South African team, and Luce got into a little spat with the South African Association. Stephen, what do you know about this? Do you know anything about this? Well, as an expert on the South African Association, mm. I can say I know next to nothing about this okay. situation. I have heard the story in passing, but okay. So Blom, enlighten me. Blom missed training last week, and it was kind uh -huh. of loosely speculated that he was dealing with an illness. Of course, the team was being glib about what was, you know, what illness. Uh, and then course, so they, he was called into the South African team. They were told that Blom was dealing with the illness, that he probably shouldn't be flying 15 hours to South Africa. Uh, and then the South African That's coach, a coward's way out, to be fair. Yeah, and then the South African coach went into the South African press and said that Lutz was hiding medical reports for, from him and that they had asked for clarification and they didn't get it the next morning, not That's realizing that uh, the next morning in South Africa was not the next morning in St. Louis, which I found was very funny. <laughs> uh, that is funny. And so then Lutz had to clarify that he'd been dealing with COVID and hadn't left his house for like a week. So that's what's going on with Jabu Lublam. So he's not going to South Africa during this international window and is not going to be available this week either. So that adds to the injury list and the non-available list. Um, also called into international action, Fritz Vollmer and Miguel Perez were called into US U19 action this weekend. Which I thought That's was pretty cool. cool for Miggy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be cool too, because like it's one thing to play in the MLS where you're like, he's noticeably a 17 year old who like has some shines of like, all right, this guy's going to be good, but he's still a really young player getting his feet under him. And now you get to, what are you away. trying to say? <laughs> I'm just saying he's a 17 year old playing in the men's league. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> well, I mean, it's the MLS. I don't know if I guess so far okay. as men's league, like but you know, half of them are teenagers anyway. That's right. MLS stood for <laughs> men's league soccer. <laughs> Ian, that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> this is for men. How have we not thought of that before? I don't know. Men's League Soccer, soccer.com. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I got for international soccer. Um, there were some other things that happened in the world of football this week that really drew our attention, uh, especially from the man sitting in St. Louis, Argus Baldwin, right now. Uh, Ian, did you. Allegedly. Catch... <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to out you. Uh, my. my... My uh, zip code straddles two cities in the county, so who knows which I exist in. <laughs> my own, my the internet doesn't know when I order it. So it constantly tells me I'm in the other one. The internet say, made up the city of Concord that tells me that my parents live in. I do not believe it. So don't don't trust everything you read on oh, the internet. Oh, so <laughs> uh, 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 okay. Uh, 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 to suggest the move neighborhood. On, move on, move on, move on, move on, move on. Are made up. <laughs> Suddenly, this is just move fine. Well, Ian, Ian, go ahead. You got to talk about content. Ian, Interesting <laughs> revelation. I'm going to keep that on the back burner for yeah, now. Yeah, we got to talk but... about Conte. Uh, don't let Steven interrupt. <laughs> yes, this. there's a conundrum. There's a different <laughs> conundrum of the Conte variety. Um, yeah, so Spurs, who is a team that is middling, but not actually middling, but middling because they should be like a top 16, but they're very middling top 16. Um, they they're drew... in fourth place where Spurs, I think, belong uh, well, as a as an ethos. I think they live for fourth place. Well, Conte <laughs> might disagree with you. He might tell you that they might finish tenth or whatever the whatever the hell he says. Um, they drew three three with Southampton. Uh, South, Southampton, Southampton. I don't care. Um, doesn't matter because they're the worst freaking team in the Premier League. Uh, they also had like the fewest draws or were like tied for the fewest draws. So, I mean, also they had like the most losses, you know, as a team that is the worst tends to have. 
And uh, they drew with them. They drew with them. They're in a heated battle to stay in fourth. Yippee. Maybe they could, maybe they could make it in the third, but uh, not with performances like this. Absolute suckitude. Um, late half goals are terrible. Goals that are scored in the first half, the first bit of the second half are essentially mm. late first half goals and they suck um extra time should not exist it should just be over 90 minutes and it's over if you're laying down too long i'm sorry that's your fault there's like a growing state of discontent like fifa has mentioned that they would like to have like stoppage and play when the ball goes out and like unanimously everyone in england was like no we can't do that <laughs> but why why can't you do that it gets I, rid of like 14 minutes of stoppage time that you have to have now if you're Keep it yeah, I'm like if you want to do that, that's cool. <laughs> Just don't add the don't add stoppage time then. Yeah. But I do kind of enjoy the drama of like, oh well, this is gonna be seven minutes. And they're like, one minute, and you're like, what? Or vice versa. The like, like not knowing how much time is on the clock yeah. too, like when you're there in the stadium is kind of crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting, too. So they don't put that on a clock. They're just like, hey, did you catch the guy, the little tiny man down there with the number? <laughs> yeah. Thing? Did you not see that? Oh, well, then good luck. I don't know. Maybe we'll blow the whistle. Oh, <laughs> no, not so much. I guess five more set pieces. Um, yeah, 3-3 three, three draw to the worst team in the league. Uh, Spurs fans weren't happy. Conte wasn't happy. That made <laughs> sense. But Conte was more than unhappy. I mean, this was, is a six goal game. That is like Conte's nightmare. Six yeah, goals that, in a game. This, this is true. <laughs> this fan was irate. He saw too many scoring <laughs> opportunities, too much actual scoring all over the pitch. He said, none of this. I don't care who's scoring what goals. This is too much. Um, yeah, so he kind of went off. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm not going to do an accent because that would be racist. Um, so I'm just going to read what he said. Uh, he said, Tottenham's story is this, 20 years, there is owner and they never won something. Why? Uh, <laughs> Spurs led by two goals uh, at St. Mary's, but conceded twice in 15 minutes. He said, the fault is only for the club or for every manager that stay here. <laughs> I have been the manager that Tottenham had on the bench. You risk to disrupt the figure of the manager and to protect the other situation in every moment. He said, until now, I try to hide the situation but not now because I repeat, I don't want to see what I've seen today because this is, and I will say this, this is unacceptable. <laughs> he and knows he's the manager, right? <laughs> unacceptable for the fans. Yeah, I'm like, this is your team. He knows I, he my, dog, that. my dog fucking hates Conte. Um, he says, there. so here's the point. There are 10 games to go, he says, and some people think we can fight. Fight for what with the spirit, this attitude, this commitment? What, for 7th, 8th, 10th place? I'm like, whoa, buddy, whoa, pump the brakes. We're Someone told start... Conte they're in like 14th place before this game, I think. I know, I'm like, hold up. <laughs> Let's just try and stay afloat in 4th. That's really, that's the the Tottenham coup de grace. is really like, hey, 4th place is first in our hearts. Uh, but he says, no, we might suck you more than that. He said, we are 11 players that go on into the pitch. I see selfish players. I see players that don't want to help each other and don't put their heart in. I'm not used to this position. I'm really upset and everyone has to take this responsibility. Um, I can't say that I disagree. I am also <laughs> very disappointed. I also think this is unacceptable. Um, but also, I've, I don't know that I've ever seen a coach quit on <laughs> the team. I don't, I think this is new to me. I mean, I've seen coaches angry. I've seen them do the whole flabbergasted. I don't know. You go ask, go ask them. I don't know. Go ask them. But then, you know, they'll all like two seconds later, like, yeah, we just got to, you know, got to pick ourselves up by our bootstraps and we'll be fine. Uh, he, did, he he quit on this team. Players quit on coaches all the time. I've never seen a coach just go, F it. You know what? I'm not going to leave, but please fire me. Just get me out of here. Um, I it's it's crazy. I feel kind of bad because I, from what I've read, I don't necessarily know that it's going to be like a lot better without him. It'll be different, and maybe it can be better. I'm not saying that he's like the best coach ever, but it seems like there's a lot of problems above him within Spurs management wise. Um, that I have to wonder if he's just a symptom of some of this. I mean, he has, he has a pretty strong personality. 
I get that these sort of outbursts have happened before, but maybe not quite to this magnitude. And that's part of him as a coach. That's just who he is when you hire him. But this was definitely like a nuclear bomb when it comes to like <laughs> a coach is going off on his own team. It's like trying to get fired, like actively hoping that he comes down and fires him mid rant. Yeah, he <laughs> says, please question my job. My job is, should be in question, please. Love of God, question my job. Um, is that Mike I, Yo? <laughs> that is, that's, that's Mike Yo's message. Um, I was looking up articles for this, and I guess it's like without being a him being officially fired, they're like, well, when when does it happen? Like, is it tomorrow? Is it? I mean, Justin, is he going to make it to the end of the season? I mean, there's like ten games or something left. I'm pretty sure. Like I. So from what I know about Spurs, and like Pochettino had a lot of the same gripes that Conte has, obviously voiced in a different way. But my understanding is that like they don't usually fire coaches, like especially on short notice. So like you almost do wonder. I know there's a lot of speculation of him like being gone and like there's that article that said ton of players expect him not to be back after the international break, but I kind of am skeptical that Levy would fire him and have to like bring on another manager. I don't know. And, like they're still in the Champions League spot. So can you fire your manager when you need to win games still? <laughs> yeah, but I'm also like, how do you like manage this team now? Like through some, you're there, but it's like through someone else. You're just not fired, but it's like, are your assistants just doing all the talking to the players? Because it's like, how do you, I'm not even necessarily saying it's wrong. Like some of these players did look like dog shit, but I'm just like, but how do you, how do you, just you can't say that. that bridge? <laughs> I just can't fathom it. Unfortunately for Tottenham, uh, Sean Dyche does mm -hmm. currently have a job. That's However, true. you know, who doesn't <laughs> big Sam, big Sam or Eller Dyche, free agent. He's going to come in and save this team. He's good at keeping teams out of relegation. Is he good at keeping teams in a Champions League spot? Absolutely I don't think... not. That's the best part. <laughs> Maybe if we told him it was like relegation. Yeah, if you, like if you dropped a sixth, you're getting relegated, actually. Those are the new rules. <laughs> yeah, he goes, oh, shit. Well, in sixth, yeah, in fifth, we will stay then. Um, it's just disappointing, especially given the fact that they could at least, like, make it into, into third or, like, the fact that this whole season they could have won a handful of games here and there and been in the conversation for like being at the top maybe maybe not so this year arsenal's pretty good but um it just for what they have it's disappointing to think that you have a manager that's still there that's like i ah, just f it you know what <laughs> i mean maybe they maybe they rally around this and they play good soccer um I mean, Glenn some of those Murray. players are used to being coached by Jose Mourinho, so like maybe <laughs> they're okay with getting talked down to. But I was reading though that he was like was still better, <laughs> like he was still like it was like handled it better than this. <laughs> if you're handling players worse than Jose Mourinho, that that's saying something. <laughs> I think that's what I was reading before. Like, yeah, I didn't think this could be worse <laughs> than Mourinho, but like I think it's worse. So like, oh, I don't think good. he actively like outwardly in the media like hated the players because jose told deli ali that like he should play like his brother who was like a bench player for some other team at the time <laughs> that's now that's the kind of sass i like bring that guy back get him out of freaking italy and bring him back i say um would that i be don't know if they just like <laughs> alternate between Mourinho and Conte <laughs> for the next few years yeah, great. Um, who do they? I was just trying to remember. They play Everton. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah. So like they're essentially battling Manchester United, and Newcastle, potentially <laughs> Liverpool for that fourth spot. Shut up. <laughs> we don't need to talk about Liverpool. Nobody mentioned Liverpool. Okay. okay. They added you into the conversation. Um, <laughs> Steven has, Steven has left the chat. <laughs> That's right. Ever, Everton, again, a team you should beat. And I'm like, maybe now Everton, like, what is this? 
what are their goals? They have like, they scored no goals. They've scored 22 goals. This is like what tied for worst in a four-way tie and a four-way tie for fewest goals scored. And I don't know, maybe they score like four or five. Cause like, who knows, who knows with this team and this coach and the morale the, or the lack thereof uh, that they'll have at that point. Everton also just drew with Chelsea. So they're playing kind of better. Do you know why? <laughs> I don't. Mm, Do you know why? Not an excuse. <laughs> That's because of Sean Dyche. I'm mm. just saying. Who he is like does. the perfect Everton manager? I we haven't I'll talked just, much about Sean Dyche, but I do like him at Everton. Oh Gary wait, yeah, because they don't have that. they don't have Tuchel or whatever, right? They never had Tuchel. Chelsea Didn't they? Tuchel. Oh, Chelsea. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had. They've had a little bit of a revolving door of managers past. They years. had Raj most recently, right? No. Or is that not their most recent? I no, well, they had um oh, why am I blinking We're on? We're all learning about Everton's <laughs> coaches. <laughs> you guys have made me just completely forget. Because Garrett Garrett listens to this podcast. He's probably oh, yeah. screaming. He is. He really is. Hi, Garrett. Scream oh, louder. <laughs> Scream so loud we can hear you. What does it say that we have zero knowledge about who is coached? Okay, okay, okay. Frank so Lampard. Lampard. Frank Lampard. Frank Lampard. So yeah, Carlo, <laughs> they went from Carlo Ancelotti to Rafi Benitez to Carlo Ancelotti. Frank what? Lampard. Who was who? Oh, Braj with was with Leeds, wasn't he? Braj was, who was with, he with. Uh, no, not West Ham. Uh, Aston Villa. Oh, no, oh, okay. no, no, Leicester City. Leicester City. Leicester City. I'm Leicester City. It. And still is. <laughs> and, still and, is, is. Yeah. and is still there. Yes. <laughs> cool. I'm... And then I was like, okay, so Stephen, I, then I got him mixed up with Stephen Gerrard for some reason. And then. <laughs> whoa. 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 Don't try to slip that one past me. Two guys hey, who <laughs> had success in the Scottish Premiership and haven't had success in the Free League. So. Whoa, let's talk about, let's pump it, let's bump the brakes with haven't had success. He doesn't need to have success. Okay. Limited. Your, How about limited? Yeah, on limited. Your, on your timeline, he doesn't limited need to have, manager he doesn't success. need to have success <laughs> on your timeline is all I'm saying, you know? Okay. Marches to the beat of his own drum. That's I right. apologize to everyone for completely forgetting about who managed where for a moment there. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to apologize to anybody. They're not paying for this. Gary understands. No one's that's paying right. for it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No one's paying for this, nor will we ever pay to change the naming rights of this. I would say they've had quite a mix of managers. They went from David Moyes in the pre Manchester United years, Roberto Martinez, to Ronald Koeman of Barcelona fame to Sam Allardyce to Marco Silva to Carlo Ancelotti who uh, left Everton to go win a Champions League title at Real Madrid the next season uh, to Rafi Benitez who didn't last long to Frank Lampard to Sean Dyche so there you go that rocks. <laughs> I thought about picking Everton rocks. for a moment I really did a long time ago when someone told me they were owned or currently used to be owned by Americans so is Liverpool. Pick Liverpool instead. And then they had who they, they had a uh, Howard, the the goalie. And I was yeah. like, oh, okay, that's fun. That it's was Donovan. like seven years ago. They also um, had Landon Donovan for a hot minute. Uh, Donovan also played there for a moment. You know, I have an Everton scarf or something I bought in the UK somewhere. Don't worry, I'll throw it away. And all the signs are telling you to support Everton, Ian. I have, I, have, <laughs> I unfortunately also have, I mean, not unfortunately, it's cool, but I have a baseball, a Arsenal baseball cap somewhere. Oof, that okay. is unfortunate. Oof. For you. Yeah, I think I'm going to wear, I think I'm going to put on my Tottenham jersey and wear the Arsenal hat and then also like put the Everton scarf around me and just oh, walk just into Amsterdam. Congratulate Arsenal on their Premier League title and we'll move on from there. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> how, how many points never, do you think they have right now? I've never been a bigger Manchester City fan in my life. <laughs> I can't let them have this. I'm sorry, Jeff, but you chose Stan Kroenke's team. This is your fault. Mm. I gotta say, Manchester City with Erling Haaland just deciding he's gonna score five goals every game is a little bit difficult to contend with, I think. <laughs> That's right. It, it is frustrating. 
Yeah. Like so much, so much green on the top of the table. Like Pep just decided, like he just remembered that if you throw through balls into Erling Haaland, he's gonna get there every time, and mm-hmm. they completely unlocked him that way. He's six <laughs> five every time he steps on the pitch, and fast. He's six five and fast. Mm-hmm. You can't you can't teach that. You cannot teach that. Steven, yes. How are you feeling about about Liverpool? Next question. Okay. <laughs> I hate I hate them. I hate I hate what they've Aww. done to me. It hurts my spirit. They've killed your love of the game. I have I have one true love, and then now I have I had the chance to have two, and which is sounds polygamous, and I don't mean it like that. But <laughs> we are you know. playing real solid. You know. Yeah, that is true. In Utah, I think it's okay. Oh, I've got some ideas That's... for Jeff. Involves the actually, I think they have owls. before we, uh, you know, get a bunch of Utahians mad at us. I think they do outlaw polygamy, uh, at this point. No, they don't, <laughs> yeah, officially in quotes. All right, I got something that I got something to look up. Uh, <laughs> oh no, you got a, your search history, Justin. Think of your search history, <laughs> sick. Save yourself, Justin. Oh, okay. So according to Utah law, polygamy or bigamy is a crime. Polygamy is considered a third degree felony in the state. Oh, you're Sweet. just gonna be- you're just gonna believe according to you Utah could potentially law. spend <laughs> a long time in prison, up to five years, and pay hefty fines up to five thousand dollars. So five years or five thousand dollars for marrying multiple people in Utah. Can your multiple wives help pay, <laughs> pay for that? <laughs> is, yeah, can you be charged? They don't have jobs. I do have a question. Can you be charged multiple times or is this like a one time deal? <laughs> right. And then, like, after you get out, you're good. Oh, ten, <laughs> I'm going to charge you once for each wife. You know, That's like when they give you life sentences for 9,000 years or whatever, which, by the way, they should keep doing that because it sounds like it sounds In, super uh, cool. Okay, there's there's some new information here I just stumbled upon. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. In 2020, the Utah legislature passed a law to decriminalize polygamy, reducing bigamy among consenting adults from a third degree felony, punishable by prison time, to an infraction on par with a speeding ticket. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So don't get caught uh being you might have to pay off hundred dollars <laughs> unless you just beat it in court and they don't show up. It's been a felony since 1935, uh, and they so a little bit of fake news there for our Utah. Yes, in case, in case you you <laughs> if you were in Utah and you came to this podcast to find out if you can get married, <laughs> you may be in for a shock. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you've listened this far because we don't want you to get confused. Yeah, really, very we are going to make you listen to the whole thing to get the information you need. That's that's called clickbait, baby. <laughs> the episode title: is, Polygamy is not okay. Still. <laughs> Ian, watch yourself because that could be the episode title. <laughs> <laughs> Polygamy right. Is since not we, okay, so. it might even be the name of the podcast since we are currently that's right. pursuing <laughs> litigation with the city of St. Louis. That's right. <laughs> Oh no, I'm not gonna do it. I'm sure there's polygamy podcasts. Do it, Ian. Look it up. No, I want to keep my searches <laughs> roof here. You and me and Mary makes three, the most famous polygamy <laughs> podcast on the internet. All right. I wait ask you, why were you searching polygamy podcasts the other day? <laughs> one one guy, three wives. <laughs> That's right. If they're going to make shows about it, it can't be wrong. That's actually the new <laughs> podcast hosted by Jeff on the on the podcast that's network. Right. That's right. <laughs> Welcome to the network. That's, that's what I said to my third wife. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Justin, are you enjoying yourself? Oh, I am. Are you are you sad about we've, what we've done to your podcast? I mean, we have made it through the itinerary. So we were talking uh, <laughs> so much hardcore soccer until Stephen jumped on. That's right. Stephen really derailed the conversation. I'm, you're saying I ruined it. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I love being the guy that ruins stuff. You just bumped it up to eleven. Mm. <coughs> Me and Ian don't have as much silly energy, I will say. So you really helped out in that respect. <laughs> 
That's right. This one's silly. The other one's silly. <laughs> mm-hmm. and you're, you're involved in both. Oh, Stephen, it's a compliment. I love having you on. I love that you're a guest for this podcast, just like Ian. I introduced Ian as my guest earlier. <laughs> yeah. I was a guest host. I just completely went absent-minded. Um, all right, everyone. I guess, uh, Ian, Stephen, do you have anything else to say on this yeah, lovely podcast? Yeah, I have something to show you, but I need you to stall for like 90 seconds. <laughs> okay. I'll, uh, I'll go ahead before we get to like, you. Gotta t- you got to promise me you don't tell the cops <laughs> that I show everyone, you what I'm going to show Everyone you. turn on safe search. <laughs> everyone, please open up the incognito browser. <laughs> while, while Stephen goes into his tour browser, I will, uh, if you like this podcast, let's just plug some things. Make sure you give us a like, yeah, give us a some rating plugs. on where you are listening to this podcast on. We love to have ratings. Um, That's right. You know, if you're if you're on the YouTube, subscribe, give us a like. You can check out some of my writing I wrote for my preview, and I'll have a review. I guess I, I mixed that up. I have a review, and I'll have a preview for this weekend's matchup at Area Sports Network. And I also just recently released an article explaining the Jabu Lublam situation for St. Louis Mag. So you can check all those out there. Check out the Two Guys One Cup podcast that my other oh, oh beautiful co host hosts. Humbled. We're humbled. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, you think Tottenham's bad? <laughs> just kidding. Oh, that's so mean. Oh, that's mean to all, everyone involved. That's we only had Tottenham. we only had one hockey reference, and it was done by me this podcast. So I'm I'm that's true. very I, well. To be I fair, no. Ian, <laughs> Ian was, too. I made no not. To be fair, Ian's reference to Mike Yo was pretty transparent. <laughs> no one else knew. Justin, you've disabled you've disabled screen sharing, so I can't show you what I want to show. Okay. How did it. I disable that? I don't know no, how I disabled close that. Closes the call. Um says the host disabled Zoom staring, and I'm I, I promise I didn't. Host. Oh, wait. All participants. Oh, you. All participants. Oh, let's see what can I share. Can you share? Oh, oh, I lost a headphone. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I think I made it open. I think I did. Oh, no. Nope. All participants. All participants? Nope. <sighs> yes, we're trying. <laughs> switch to all guests. Oh, here we go. Here we go. All right. You tell I me got when, it. Justin. You tell me when. All right. All right. Hold, hold Try on. it my now. Computer, my computer's moving very <laughs> slowly. So <laughs> oh, my God. It's like Welcome to my boss to... earlier. Three guys, one Zoom. Uh, this is our <laughs> upcoming is your, after show. <laughs> is your printer on the fritz? Uh, yes. Have you bought any new toner? Welcome to Texas. I love toner. What oh, does toner do? By while the way? Stevens, while Stevens figuring this out. Oh my um, God, work! I was. Go I visited my grandpa. Before yeah, I came Cage. back to Kansas City, um, uh, and he bought a soccer for dummies book to better understand oh uh, that's so games. cute so, <laughs> that's I thought the it was, most adorable thing i've ever heard the best thing in the world it was like you like wanted to show me that he had this book soccer for dummies so he could better understand <laughs> Go. all right grandpa there's only two ready? rules yeah all right Steve, i'm ready, ready? i'm ready oh, yeah. i guess this is a very rough version of something that we're going to improve and then publicize are you ready oh yes, no you said we're going to publicize it <laughs> Look at this. Oh, at this. wow. Steven's Look at this creation. At work. The Cincinnati Index coming live. <laughs> the Cincy Index. That's the word I was looking for. Thank you. That's a much better name. Uh, or I would also settle for the campaign to sh- shame and humiliate FC <laughs> as to give a nod to Parks and Recreation. But this is where we're at. All right. Through four games, they have seven points. We have 12. But now, but from here on out, this is for this line's pretty much just gonna go like this. So we've got a good head start here. <laughs> and our line, <laughs> if our line goes up here next game, then we're we're made. <laughs> we're we just golden. need we just need one more win or two more. Wins. I I don't right. like all the pressure we're putting on this team. Ian, there's no pressure because FC Cincinnati is a garbage rat. Okay, right. it's like. Are you going to eat healthier than a rat that lives in the garbage? Probably. I'm not. All this team had to be was a group that didn't win the wooden spoon three years in a row, and That's right. so far so good. They are off to a hot start. We <laughs> could still win the wooden spoon, but the chances seem slim. Hey, I've watched Colorado play this year. I don't think it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> Rough. So that what That's what I've been rough. working on. That is good. Holy Steven. crap, it's 7.30 p.m. over here. Wow. Steven, that was good graph work. 
Thank and I, you. I want to thank you for bringing I'm that to the pod. I'm going to show the rough draft to, to Jeff and have him improve mm. it like 7,000 times. Okay. We'll have a you new interactive. Join in next week. We'll have a new and improved. I need it to be like, I need it to be sparkling. <laughs> I think exactly. it's not going to be, it's not going to be improved. Every week we'll just add something to it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. All right, folks. It's going to be great. Thank Thanks, you so much everyone. for listening. Steven, do you want to sign off? I've, I've stolen your duties. I, I don't know. It's weird to be on this side of the table. I think I'm not good at it. I think I just create a lot of chaos. But would okay. you like me to lead the sign off? I would like you to, to lead. I don't know where I'm going from here. I'm just going right, to ramble folks. for another 20 minutes if you leave listen, it to me. Listen to Uncle Steven. <laughs> St. Louis City SC has played four games and won all of them. This is unprecedented. We are a team. We are a group of people supporting a team that loves us as deeply mm. as we love them. Cherish these okay. moments. You'll never have an inaugural season again. This is a special, special time to be a St. Louis sports fan. You're all lovely, wonderful people. We hope you have a blessed week and we'll talk to you after the game on Saturday. <laughs> Goodbye. Adios. I, I do. <laughs>